Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about fatigue and the spectrum of fatigue. There's different levels of fatigue, intermittent fatigue, and chronic fatigue. So let's go ahead and discuss some of this. Chronic fatigue spectrum. Now, there's normal fatigue, which is you work the double shift, you have to cook dinner, you have to take care of the kids, I'm tired. The other one is maybe you're traveling. You went to California, just got back, time difference, you have a little jet lag, that's normal fatigue. Now we also have intermittent fatigue, and these are episodes of fatigue during the month, the week, or the day. Month could be, I have menstruation, and because of menstruation or heavy bleeding, we have anemia, right, causing a, a, a fatigue. Fatigue during the week, it can be I work normally because I rested on Saturday, Sunday. I work Monday, Tuesday. By Wednesday or Thursday, I'm pretty tired. I'm pretty wiped out. Episodes of fatigue during the day. This can be morning, late afternoon, evening fatigue. Chronic fatigue can occur due to multiple intermittent factors leading to chronic fatigue. It could be anemia. It could be stress response. It could be menstruation. It could be hormonal, right? Chronic fatigue due to specific disease. Let's say you have a genetic disorder like th uh, thalassemia, or you have an autoimmune condition that causes fatigue. And over a period of time, it can create chronic issues. Myalgic encephalomyelitis, or chronic fatigue. This is pretty serious. <clears throat> it creates a lot of uh, inflammatory processes in the brain, and it's a uh, process where someone is pretty fatigued all the time there is no real change in their fatigue level. So let's go ahead and discuss one type of fatigue, which is morning fatigue, okay? So chronic fatigue, mornings, could be due to obstructive sleep apnea. You could stop breathing in the middle of the night where you, um, you can pause for three to five seconds and then breathe again. So that could be a problem. Urination at night, insomnia, whether you're not falling asleep properly or you're waking up in the middle of the night. Impaired cortisol awakening response. That's an important one. So sleep apnea. How do you know? If you have loud snoring, you're not breathing or intermittently stopping, right? You wake up with a morning headache or you have mood changes. You're irritable, okay? Dry mouth because you're op sleeping with your mouth open. Cortisol Impaired cortisol response, one of the telltale signs is you get up, you have no appetite in the morning, or you may crave sugar. You're anxious or you're irritable in the morning, and you need to move to feel normal. What that means is you get out of bed, you don't feel normal, you're very sluggish, you just don't have uh, any energy. And you might just go ahead and start you know, going up and down the stairs in the house and you start to feel your energy pick up because of the cortisol response. And also those types of patients are the ones who grab that big cup of coffee in the morning. They need a big cup of coffee to get started every morning. Uh, traumatic brain injury creates brain, creates brain fatigue. Now this is um, not really discussed very often in mainstream uh, medicine because post-concussion or post-traumatic um, syndromes can create issues with brain fatigue. Urination at night is pros prostate hypertrophy, overactive bladder, or diabetes. So people who have sugar dysregulation will often urinate in the middle of the night several times, waking them up. And obviously overactive bladder and, and prosthetic hypertrophy, or prostate hypertrophy. Insomnia, difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep. Typically when you have a problem falling asleep, you have high blood sugar problems. So the classic example is you get home from work, you have a big dinner, and you sit down in front of the couch, and you start to fall asleep, you're not off. So you go upstairs and try to get to sleep, and you're wide awake, you can't fall asleep. It might take you an hour or two, okay? The other one is you fall asleep fine, but you wake up in the middle of the night, typically one, two, or three in the morning. Those are the people who have low blood sugar or hypoglycemic events. So those types of patients have low blood sugar problems 
In the high sugar problems, patients who have high sugar problems will oftentimes nap throughout the day or fall asleep at night, and then when they go to bed, they can't fall asleep again. So those are some of the mechanisms of uh, morning fatigue, okay? On our next video, we'll go ahead and discuss some of the other mechanisms of fatigue, so stay tuned. My name is Dr. Jin Sung. We're at Clinical Excellence Meets Excellent Results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.